Hello and welcome. Today I want to spend a little bit of time talking about network automation using Console and Terraform. But to start, I think it's useful to talk about what does a traditional environment look like in terms of that end-to-end -end application workflow and how that typically requires sort of manual intervention at the network layer. So usually where this starts is we might have an application. That application is interfacing and using, let's say, a database. But of course there's an underlying network that needs to support this. So typically in between our application and our database, we might put a firewall and that's being used to govern access. So this might impose a rule that says IP1 is allowed to talk to IP2. And then similarly in front of our application, we might have a load balancer that's allowing us to spread traffic across multiple instances, manage failovers, et cetera. Right. So this might be a relatively classic pattern. Now the kind of challenge we typically see is as this application team continues to iterate, push a new version, scale up and down, they have to interface with the network in a relatively manual way. So they might deploy a new instance of it, but now typically they have to file a ticket against the networking teams to update the load balancer and add this new instance into the back end, as well as to update the firewall and add a new rule to say IP3, for example, can also talk to IP2. So in this sort of a classic networking scenario, the application team is not empowered to really self-service and deploy their application and manage that lifecycle. Yes, they might be able to deploy it onto a platform such as Kubernetes or cloud in an automated way, but then they're stuck filing a ticket and waiting potentially days or weeks for the underlying network to get automated, right? Or updated in this case. So where does console start to fit into this story? Well, console acts as a service discovery mechanism at its core, meaning when we deploy console, what we're using it for is to have all of our different applications register. And this gives us sort of a bird's eye view, right? Or a universal catalog of what are all of the services that are running in our environment, right? So the most basic layer, instead of an, the application hard coding the IP address of the database, the application might be querying console to say, where's my database running? And then it's using that to communicate with it. So this starts to avoid the fragility of having hard-coded IP addresses. It allows us to scale things up and down, manage failures in a more reliable way, and overall enable sort of a microservice pattern where we don't have a bunch of hard-coded IPs and load balancers everywhere in the environment, right? But in this case, we still have a firewall and a load balancer. These might be hardware devices, might be software appliances that are in between, and those things have a set of rules that need to be managed. The load balancer needs to know about the backends, the firewall needs to know which IPs to grant, and so there's a bit of a disconnect here. And so this is actually where Terraform then comes into the picture, which is really looking and saying, okay, should we be managing the underlying set of IP addresses for the firewall or the underlying set of IP addresses for the load balancer? Or is what we really care about a higher level policy that says that this application is allowed to talk to this database? That's really what we care about. That's what we should manage. The IPs are sort of a detail. Console knows what the IPs are. They're coming and going. We don't really care to manage them all the time. So this is really where what we enable is with Terraform, you actually author an infrastructure as code definition, right, using Terraform, on how to configure this underlying device. So in this case, this might be a Palo Alto firewall, but over here we might say, great, I have a different configuration for how I should be doing, you know, again, this is infrastructure as code with Terraform. And here I might say I'm managing my F5 big IP device, right, where this might be my Panos, firewall, right? And so we've partnered uh, with basically everyone in the networking sort of universe, everyone from Cisco to Juniper to Palo Alto to F5 to Checkpoint and more. We sort of list everybody on our website, but all of the core networking vendors have done the work of standardizing by building a Terraform provider that allows you to manage their underlying either hardware device or software appliance, or it might be an SDN type network fabric. So we can define the rules in Terraform about how to manage those. Now what we don't want to do with Terraform is just move the hard-coded IPs from the firewall's configuration into Terraform's configuration and have a whole list of hard-coded IPs in Terraform. So that now every time we update the app, we have to now come and modify the infrastructure's code and manually do another apply, right? Instead, those become sort of a variable input to our script, right? We'd say our variableized input you know, is the set of IPs for my app, it's the set of IPs for my database in this case, right? For the load balancer, it might only be the set of IPs for the app. 
but that is a variable that is being fed into this Terraform configuration. We're not going to hard code those because console has a real time dynamic view of what all those variables are. So how we actually enable this end to end is by marrying console and Terraform together so that when this application gets deployed, it registers with console. Console then feeds that in as a set of variables to Terraform to automatically execute it. So now we don't need to manually manage this static set of IPs, right? Instead, we say, great, I've defined the policy that says, you know, my application is allowed to talk to my database. I don't actually care what their IPs are. When they change, I'll re-render the Pal you know, Palo Alto configuration. Similarly, this load balancer on this backend should route traffic back to this application. I don't really care if there are 1, 10, 50 copies of it, what the IP is. Just add and remove the IPs as they come and go. And so again, we can look and say that's a variable input. As that application changes, console will feed that in and execute Terraform automatically. Right? So at the heart, this workflow now enables us to really achieve end-to-end -end network automation without the developers caring. Right? They can auto-scale their application, deploy new versions, do what they need to do. As long as that app registers with console, the downstream automation will trigger to update the load balancers, the firewalls, the API gateways, the underlying network fabrics without them filing a ticket or having to interface with that, right? So I think the challenge and question then becomes, okay, great, but how do you start to do some of this state safely, right? Obviously, I want to have a separation of concerns. I don't want my development teams to necessarily be able to update the configuration for my firewalls or my you know, front door load balancers. I want to be able to have visibility on which application changes are, are taking place. And I want to be able to impose policy controls on what those changes can be so it doesn't become sort of wild west, right? And so historically, the way you solve this is you had a separation between your networking teams who might have owned these devices and your application teams, and they interfaced through a ticket, right? So this is where really leveraging Terraform Commercial, Terraform Enterprise, or Terraform Cloud becomes valuable. So instead of each of these just being free-floating Terraform definitions, console can actually integrate directly with something like Terraform Cloud, Terraform Enterprise, right? And so what this allows us to then do is for each of these definitions, for each of these different devices, we can now connect this and define a Terraform workspace. So each of these becomes a workspace within Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise. And this now lets us do a number of really important things. One is we can obviously tie this into a role-based access control scheme. So we might say, great, only my actual NetOps team, they're allowed to come in and modify the Terraform definition, right? I want my networking team or my platform team, they own what the codified definition of this is. My developer shouldn't be able to modify it. Maybe they have permission to come in and read it. They should be able to see how it's configured to debug something or understand the system, but they don't actually need permission to be able to modify anything, right? So now we can tie each of these into their own workspace and apply role-based access control around them, right? The next really important piece is now we have sort of an audit trail, right? As well as sort of full visibility on all of these networking changes, right? So every time an app is coming and going, it's gonna register that with console, console will detect it, and if there's an appropriate you know, downstream that needs to be triggered, console will then interface with Terraform and trigger an update to that workspace. But now we can actually come in and see the history of those runs. What were the variables that were fed into it? When did a change take place? Maybe that correlates to an incident or a sort of a degradation or maybe a, just a change in, in sort of network performance. And so we want to be able to have that kind of visibility of what changes took place, when did they take place, what was the trigger and cause for those things. So by using Terraform Cloud and Enterprise, we actually get that history. We have that sort of provenance of how did this take place, what took place. Then lastly, we can actually use some of the same policy as code frameworks, right? So we can apply policy as code to put additional governance on top of this. So we might want to have an additional layer of policy checks in terms of, hey, is this a valid change that we're going to apply before that goes through? Much like we would apply policy as code to our normal infrastructure as code pipeline in terms of how we're making changes to our infrastructure, we can impose those same changes or same policies on how we're applying changes to the network as well, right? So this becomes key. And then lastly is we can actually build on top of this ecosystem. And so if we need to invoke sort of hooks into other systems, we can use the ability to have run tasks, right? Or sort of web hooks 
so that as different orchestration activities are taking place, we might wanna notify other downstream systems. Great, we did a change with Terraform, we updated this load balancer, we updated this firewall, now we wanna do a webhook out to potentially our CMDB and notify that, or we wanna go out to Slack and leave a notification for people, right? So we can start building on top of the kind of capabilities and ecosystem and API, Terraform Cloud and Terraform Enterprise support to really be able to hook in this orchestration into a broader environment, right? So this is how we start marrying these two together, right? Console at the base provides that catalog, that sort of real-time view of you know, which IPs belong to which services and how are those changing as applications come and go. And these applications might span many different environments, right? This could be you know, a Kubernetes-based app, this could be a VM-based app, maybe it's running on a native you know, ECS Fargate type of environment, you know, it might be bare metal, et cetera, et cetera. So we kind of don't care where the applications are coming from. It's about creating that single global consistent catalog of all of it. That then enables us to connect it into things like Terraform to do the sort of automation of the network layer. And then of course, bringing in things like Terraform Cloud, Terraform Enterprise, really allow us to do it in sort of a safe way at a kind of an enterprise scale, right? Having role-based access control, having the visibility, being able to do policy governance, you know, being able to reuse modules Right, that becomes another key piece here, right? So how do we reuse modules and definitions across multiple different things, right? If I have you know, multiple F5s, I don't want them to all be done in a different way. I can leverage the private registry, reuse my Terraform scripts and do it in kind of a consistent way across the environment, right? So it's really about doing this safely at scale, but ultimately enabling that sort of end-to-end -end automation of the network. So hopefully this was helpful uh, just to learn a little bit more about how we think about sort of end-to-end -end network automation and, and sort of the power of bringing Terraform and console together. Thanks so much.